All right, what's up, everybody? Back at you again with the fresh speed run. It's your boy, Doctor Fat Body. So we are going to do a run of Marvel vs. Capcom 2 for the Sega Dreamcast. Um, we are doing this run on console, so if you compare this time to the time that I have on the boards, I actually did the run on an emulator um, because there's no real clear stated rules on what's good and what's not. It has a section for emulator, so we did it. Um, but there is some pretty cool tech to talk about during this run. It's not a crazy run, uh, just a nice little quickie for you. So basically, we're going to start off the match and get a hit as Magneto. And you'll see right around 9 hits on some of the sections, we will be dropping the combo. What this actually allows us to do is expose the enemy because they can only block so much in a series of attacks in the Japanese version of the game. And so, with going high, it actually uh, forces the enemy to block high and then ne not have the option to block low. Now this works on most characters throughout the run. Um, when we get to some of the later fights, we do have to mix up the strategy just a little bit. Um, but for the most part, you know, what you see is what you get. Uh, Marvel 2 is a phenomenal game, uh, released uh, in 1999 in Japan and uh, early 2000 in America. This game pits uh, 56 different fighters against each other from uh, all kinds of Capcom games um, and a bunch of different Marvel lore, such as like X-Men, Avengers, things of that nature, Spider-Man. Basically, this game was there to create dream matches for you in the arcade, and it has a wonderful legacy. Some people I'd like to give a huge shout-out to in the community that mean a lot to me. I'm like all the East Coast, uh, Smooth Viper, Chris, Chris Matrix, uh, Nelson, rest in peace. Um, just all the homies that, uh, from playing online or talking to, have helped me get better at this game. I played a couple of, got a chance to play a couple of them offline at different events too. Uh, shoutouts to Eric letting me stay with him for uh, DreamHack. That was a really fun time, a really cool tournament we went to uh, up here in Denver, Colorado. Um, you know, a lot of the West Coast dudes as well. Uh, like uh, we have Raymond, we got uh, or Spartan, we got uh, Ken Villalobos, aka Mr. Chaos. Uh, a ton of those guys, man. We got like uh, Servbot, uh, Compton, all the homies from the West Coast. Uh, my teacher, Ruben, who helped me actually get into this game and learn how to play competitively, uh, which is the reason that I can execute in the manner that I can, uh, you're seeing during this run. And just, you know, Capcom for releasing such a beautiful broken mess that was never intended to be this way. Uh, Basically, none of the stuff that you're seeing right now was intended. Uh, Magneto and Storm were not supposed to be as broken as what they were. Like, there's a couple things they knew about, you know, when they were in beta testing a, a player such as Boss, uh, famous for Street Fighter Alpha 2 in CVS 2. Uh, he was one of the testers for this game. They knew about the multiple Air Hyper Viper Beam loops. But you know, there's a ton of stuff that's also changed throughout the years. Um, one character that used to be uh, considered very, very poor in this game that ended up being, uh, in a lot of people's opinion, either best or second best character in the game is Sentinel. Uh, Sentinel, in the first two years of the game, before people really started u utilizing his flight mode, was just, you know, no one liked him. They thought he was big, they thought he was slow, didn't do a lot of damage, was hard to hit with. And then uh, one uh, Rotron from uh, Seattle, uh, and Quan Easy and a couple other players really started looking into how the character played and found out a glitch which is known as unfly. Basically, if you have a flying character and you get hit while you are flying and uh, your back has not touched the ground, you enter a state that's known as unfly. Uh, and so generally, if we stop flying with a character and hit a button, nothing will come out. But if you have unfly with a character such as Dalsum, Iron Man, or Sentinel, uh, after being in our flight state, you can actually unfly, hit a button, and it will come out. Um, the limit is 20 punches or 20 kicks. Um, mixing and matching, mas mixing and mashing the two actually don't affect one another. It's just once you've hit the threshold with either. And again, you'll see we're just you know cracking the coconut on storm over and over again. Uh, you really want to get them in the corner just to be able to deal as much damage as possible. You'll see here we went for the snap, but due to Tron rings, we weren't able to actually optimize it. If we would have gotten the snapback, it actually would have been really good. Um, uh, so basically, snapbacks uh, allow us to do one of two things. So if there's only one character on the screen when we snap them out, it'll just bring in another character on the screen. Um, some of those characters, you know, it'll be uh, based, based on the assist button that you hit. So if we snap with assist button one, and uh, say we had Storm out on the screen, it would have been Sentinel that actually got brought out to us, and uh, if we had hit assist two, it would have been Dan that was brought out to us. Now, if you hit both characters with the snapback, um, the first part of that is true. Whatever button you hit, that character, uh, corresponding character will come out. 
the crazy part about all of this is that if two characters are on screen and you do a snapback, um, they can't actually bring out a new character until the second character is off screen. And if you catch them in a move, you can actually uh, infinite them to death and do one of the only true infinites in this game. Uh, that's a big conception, uh, misconception about Marvel 2 that I'd actually like to clear up right now as well, is that uh, this game is just riddled with infinites and blase blase. That's actually not true. Um, when a character gets around 45 to 50 hits, they actually go into a state which is known as dizzy. Um, now, in older games, when you would get dizzy, you'd actually fall to the ground and have an animation of your character being dazed and or confused. In Marvel 2, they didn't do that. Actually, uh, in Marvel 2, when you dizzy, you spin out in the air. And uh, by the time you've landed on your feet, you're already done with your dizzy animation. Now, during your dizzy animation, you cannot be hit as well, which frankly, if you could in this game, this would be the most broken fighting game ever, because there'd be no escape. You would just get, you'd get robbed to 55 hits, and you would get exposed. You'd get blown up, and that's it. GG's, you know what I mean? You gotta take that L. Um, the, one of the few characters in this game that uh, actually breaks that exception is Iron Man. And it's not that he breaks it, it's just that when we get around 45 hits with the Iron Man Infinite, which I'm sure a lot of you have seen, uh, they even had the Marvel 2 cabinet at uh, AGDQ, or sorry, SGDQ that had the Iron Man Infinite on it. But essentially with Iron Man, what we're trying to do is uh, you get the character 45 hits, and by the time they're there, you will be pushed into the corner. You do a standing fierce punch and end in Proton Cannon. Proton Cannon will eat up the rest of the remaining health from the character and kill them, and due to it being a projectile super, the, the character actually doesn't have the opportunity to dizzy out. So, they call that a true infinite because due to guard breaking, which you've seen it a little bit in this run, uh, we'll do a quick quick breakdown of that. Basically, if a new character is coming in, uh, they are in what's known as normal jump state. In normal jump, you can only do uh, one special move before losing all air actions, and in normal jump, if you have blocked one move and go to block again, you actually don't have the ability to. It's only in super jump. So when a character comes in in uh, normal jump mode, if we force them to block once and then continue attacking them, that actually uh, triggers what's known as a guard break. And if we go back to what we were talking about with Iron Man, it truly allows us to just blow up the competition because you go 45 hits, you know, Iron Man Infinite, super, character comes out, guard break, Iron Man Infinite, super, character comes out, Iron Man, guard break, Iron Man Infinite, dead. You know, GG's. Uh, Marvel 2 isn't very much of a one-player game, but there are times where it can become one. Uh, also, shout out to Josh 360, one of my, uh, you know, good homie from the East Coast. He and uh, we played a lot, a lot of games on Xbox Live back in the day. He made me a lot better at this game. His Iron Man is disgusting. If you get touched once, you are dead. Also, I'd like to mention Capcom. Please give us a, a modern day port of this game. With Xbox and PS3 servers going to go down, you know, sooner than later, and that being the only viable way to play this game, we need something. And there are thousands of Marvel players that just want to get down on this game again and compete. The hardest part is if someone new gets into the game, they don't even have the option. Because you can't download the game anymore, because it was taken off of the Xbox Live Marketplace and PS3 Marketplace due to licensing issues. Dirty schmicks up there. Some of these AI in this run can actually be pretty mean too. It's uh, fun to witness. Uh, thankfully, uh, in this run, we actually didn't get anybody bad. Uh, we actually got a lot of really good stuff. Bad things to get in this run include uh, characters with armor. So, like, well, we got one of them. Sentinel isn't the best. He has a lot of health and super armor. Um, Hulk and Juggernaut are also horrible to get. And the characters I'd like to see either early or not at all uh, include both of the Wolverines, Spiral, and Coban. They all can just, you know, put a bit of a damper on the, on the quick times we're trying to get. And now here we have the game's final boss, who is uh, known as Abyss. Uh, Abyss, you know, not hard, not playable. Um, people made him playable through, like, different game chart codes and stuff back in the day, but you wouldn't even want to play him, because he's not a good character. Um, so here's really easy, we're just going to be transitioning over him, doing uh, fierce punches and kicks, just to break down his health as fast as we can. And we'll be calling Tron Bond to add a little bit of extra damage on that as well. Now here you'll see we actually wait, if you hit him from behind while he does his super, it actually has a hitbox behind it, which only interacts with our uh, 
and with our hitboxes. So if we throw out something like a jab or a crouching short, it's actually not good for us. Now here we have a cool strat. We're going to do crouching short to crouching roundhouse called Tron Bond. Super jump cancel the crouching roundhouse and then transition over. Here we had some bad RNG. Basically these bubbles are unblockable and you have to shake out of them, so similar to a Thanos bubble. And then again, just the, the, sh the shots that he does can be really, really good and, uh, you know, lose some time for us, unfortunately. And now here we have uh, Stage 3 of Abyss. Stage 3 of Abyss is easy peasy lemon squeezy. Basically what we're going to do is we are going to neutral jump up and do uh, a series of either Light into Fierce or Fierce in the Roundhouse. And then instantly super afterwards. Um, supering not only makes him transition slower because it counts in every individual hit by itself. Uh, it doesn't allow him to transition, but also does a ton of uh, AOE damage over him. Well, this has been Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I am Dr. Fatbody. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to provide you with this wonderful commentary.